In this second of a three-part video series, I'm going to show you how to now use the proxy DLL created in Tutorial 1. Let's get started by creating a new Visual Studio 2010 console project. I'm going to name our application console application log demo and store it under the C temp folder used in Tutorial 1. Now that we have our new project created and saved under our temp folder, we can begin adding the JMBridge Pro related references to the logging application. First we'll add a reference to our logging DLL that we created in Tutorial 1, followed by two JMBridge Pro core libraries that will ultimately support runtime features like data marshalling and shared memory management. The supporting DLLs include JMB Share and JMB Shared Memory, and these can be found in the JMBridge distribution tree. Note if you're using TCP or fast binary communication for your transport mechanism, it's not necessary to reference JMB Shared Mem DLL from your project. Next, we add the demo example configuration file app.config, which can be found in our log demo folder. This schema and its associated attributes will determine which .NET framework is being accessed, in our case .NET 4.0, and which interoperability transport channel we want to use between Java and .NET. Let's look at the four changes I've made to the example app.config file. First, I've commented out the .NET 2.0 content in favor of using the .NET 4.0 attributes which are now uncommented. Note also that I've commented out the TCP fast binary related attributes in favor of using the product shared memory features. Be sure to pay close attention to these shared memory attributes as they are machine specific. So in other words, just make sure these paths point to the correct local resources on your machine. Next, let's replace the default program .cs file with the sample C# -sharp logging code that's in our log demo folder. With the example logging code now loaded into the project view, note the following. First of all, note that the proxies for the Java objects in log4j are used exactly as the original objects would be used in Java. Note also that when typing in calls to the Java objects, Visual Studio's IntelliSense facility will offer to complete the names of method calls in the same way it does for calls to .NET objects, and will provide information on number and type of parameters. Next, let's remove the default program.cs file from the Solution Explorer and add a modal message box. I want to add this to the source code so that we're able to view the logging demo's output before the application exits. Our final step now is to resolve the message box form that we're using by adding an additional reference to the system windows forms namespace. With our project now complete, we can go ahead and build and then eventually run the example logging demo in debug mode. Note the logging output in our console that is generated from both our .NET side and a newly available Java side. Well, this concludes tutorial two. In tutorial three, we'll cover the TCP fast binary communication channel and review general JMBridge Pro architectural details They'll help you make an informed decision on how to best deploy a newly created interoperability project.